Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. We continue our work through Chapter 5, uh, looking at functions. And as you can see, the title of this uh, video is a little bit, which you might call unusual, non-functional functions. Um, another name for these things is procedures. So uh, the main thing um, that we want to talk about here are functions that are intended to do things instead of return values. Now when I talk about a function as being functional, uh, I use functional in this terms in the sense of the functional paradigm. Um, functional programming is based heavily on the mathematical idea of functions and we said earlier that when you have things like f of x equals x squared. Uh, this is a mathematical function and it evaluates an expression for you and gives you back a value and that's all it does. It doesn't have any what we refer to as side effects. It doesn't do anything else and what's significant about that is that the output depends only upon the input. So if I were to write that function in Scala When I say f of 3, I get back the value 9. If I say f of, f of 3 again, I still get back a 9. The output that I get uh, depends only upon what I pass into it, nothing else. And it doesn't do anything else to change the nature of, of what's going on uh, in the computer. There are lots of functions that don't do this. Uh, for example, the function read int, well, what's it going to give us back? Well, that depends. Okay, that depends upon what I type in. If I type in 25, I get back 25. If I type in 3, I get back 3. Okay, so read int in a, uh, in a formal sense really isn't functional. Um, it's, it is doing what are referred to as side effects. Okay? And, and so every time that you call it, it changes something from the outside world. It interacts with, with something else on the outside. Another example of a function that has a side effect is print line. Okay? Print line prints something to the screen. When we put it inside of our uh, scripts, that is the primary reason for calling it. Now something you might have noticed here is the fact that print line does, uh, when we execute it, the REPL doesn't tell us that it gave anything back. On all these others we got results. Here it just printed a value. Well we can kind of force Scala to tell us what was given back by declaring a variable and setting that variable equal to the return value of print line. And by doing this, we can see another built-in type in Scala, a type called unit. Okay, now unit is the type that Scala basically uses to represent um, an unimportant value. Okay, so, and the reason why it doesn't get printed out is because it says, oh, you returned unit, that was something you didn't really care about. You can also see here that it prints out a set of parentheses. Indeed, uh, that set of parentheses evaluates to unit. And if we type it directly into the RAPL, the RAPL once again doesn't print out when you have a result of unit. It doesn't bind a new result name to it. But if we create a variable and set it to be this uh, object, then it will tell us, okay, A is of, has the value unit, uh, but it doesn't like to, to report back unit to us. What if we wanted to write a function uh, that was just supposed to take a person's name and then print out you know, a greeting for them, hello and their name? Well, let's call that function greeting. And we have to give the name of the person. The name well, it's definitely not an enter a double, needs to have the type of string because all of our text values will have the type string. And the question is, what type should this give us back? Okay, well, the description that I had was that it wasn't really going to give us back anything. Okay, 
and, and it, it's just going to print a value. The appropriate return type for that in Scala is unit. So here I can say print line hello plus name and then let's put a period at the end and close it off. And now we can call that function uh, and see that it does what it's supposed to and it gives us back unit. These functions that don't return anything to them, uh, in certain languages, for example, in the Pascal language, they were actually referred to as a procedure. They were given a different name. Uh, Scala doesn't give them a separate name, but knowing the term procedure as a function that relies only on its side effects and doesn't give you back any information uh, can be useful as, as a term because A, you might hear it someplace else, and B, it might be useful for your communication when you're talking to other people. Um, it also happens to be something that you wind up doing quite a bit. And so there is a shortcut for this so that instead of having to type in colon unit equals, turns out that when you define a function that returns unit in Scala, you have a shortened syntax where you just don't put any colon, any type, or the equal sign. And, and actually, it turns out that most important is leaving out the equal sign. If you leave out an equal sign, it automatically assumes that you are returning unit. And basically, it puts in all of this for you. Remember, the return types on functions aren't always, are, aren't, yeah, aren't always required. In fact, in general, they're not required. So you could, it is possible to just have an equal sign in there, in which case it will figure out the type of the last value. In this case, that would be unit. Uh, for this example, because print line gives back a unit, even if I had an equal sign here, it would say that greeting gives back unit. Um, and you can see here, even though I didn't put colon unit equals, this comes out and says that it gives me back a unit. Okay, so, so this is the procedure syntax. Um, I will actually use it a fair bit anytime when it's handy to, uh, to if basically I will pretty much never type in this if I have a function that I'm defining that's not returning anything I will use this syntax for it instead. Now this leads to an interesting example of something that I mentioned earlier. I said earlier that One of the things that beginning programmers struggle with is the difference between returning a value and printing a value. Okay. And to help you understand this, um, let's write a different function uh, called print quadrant. And we're going to pass in the x and y variables again for things. But in this case, this is not going to return anything for us. Because as the name says, all this is going to do is it's going to print the quadrant for us. Uh, because I don't want to rewrite code, I will go ahead and use the quadrant function that we've written before um, and just print it out. So a lot of times novice programmers feel that this is basically the same as this and it turns out that when you're really programming those two are remarkably different. Okay, so why is that? Well, let's say that I want to um, I want to print out a uh, a random point that is in the same quadrant as the one that is uh, passed in. I don't know. Or, or actually, um, yeah, that'll work. Um, okay. Well, in order to do that, I need to know what quadrant we're in. Def random in quadrant
and the random point is a double double. So we're going to return a tuple that represents a point in two space. And what I want to do here is, um, oh, actually, no, no. Um, what I want to do here is I need to get the quadrant and then I need to have some ifs based upon the quadrant that will give us back different values. So I want to say val quad equals and then if quad is one I am going to give back uh, a random point that is a uh, call math.random twice. Uh, the math.random function gives you a random number between zero and one. It's inclusive at the zero, so it could give you a zero. It's exclusive at one, so it cannot actually give you one. And if it's in quadrant two, then the x component is negative. We have two, we have three, in quadrant three both are negative, and in quadrant four only the y is negative. Okay, so this is just a little function. Um, and let's use the load to load that in. Make sure we don't have any errors. It's actually going to, it runs everything. So uh, we have to do the inputs that are down here at the bottom of the file. Now this works simply because quadrant gives me back a value and I can store it in here and I can do this with it. What happens if instead of calling the quadrant function, which gives me back a value, which gives me back an int, what happens if I call print quadrant? Well, it will show up on screen and the user will get it. But what happens to this function down here? Well, let's save that and let's try loading this again. As you can see, we ran into some problems. Um, it says that uh, the problem that we had really was the fact that the uh, quad here winds up being a, of type unit because print, print quadrant returns a unit and then it starts giving us these warnings and saying um, unit will never be equal to one nor will it be equal to two nor will it be equal to three and so that causes us uh, some some problems. Um, so I've mentioned when I mentioned this this difference before I said that in general you want to write things that return values like this instead of things that just print values. And the reason is when you return a value you can use that value in other code. So it makes that function useful in other ways. Calling just the quadrant function here it actually winds up being something that we can use. Whereas if you print a value, it goes out to the screen and the user sees it, but you can't continue using it in your program. In some sense, it's lost to you. It just went out to the screen. It's much better to write a function that returns a value, and then if you need to print it, you can call print with that value. But having the value gives you more capabilities and more flexibility. So just something to, to play with and, and think about. Printing is not the same as returning, and the returning is far more useful. Uh, you're much better off in general having the value back than you would be in just printing it to the screen. So that's it for this video, and we'll see you again soon.